Hi class, in this lecture, I wanna talk about section 2.1 of your textbook, which is about counting, okay? And um, the question here, or what we're gonna be looking at is how the pigeonhole principle, which is one of the last things we'll get to actually, leads to precision through estimation. So um, I just have a bunch of questions for us. And um, in this lecture, I'm gonna pose some questions and we'll talk about how we solve them, um, kind of with estimation. And then finally, we'll talk about uh, this thing called the pigeonhole principle to um, answer a question about a hairy body. I know that seems weird. Okay, but here's the uh, first question we have. Okay, uh, this is kind of like an estimation question. So how many ping pong balls are needed to fill up a 20 foot by 20 foot by 10 foot classroom? So there's actually no right or wrong answer here. Okay, this is a question that I might pose to you in this class, or you might see in this class in your Wiley Plus homework. Um, like, how would you even begin to estimate this? All right. Um, okay, so first off, the way I would tackle this problem is I go, okay, a 20 foot by 20 foot by 10 foot classroom. So let's find the volume, the volume of the classroom. So to find the volume of the classroom, I'm going to load up my, just a trusty calculator here. Well, the volume of a, of a rectangular classroom is length times width times height. So 20 feet times 20 feet times 10 feet. Okay, this classroom has a volume of 40, or excuse me, of 4,000 cubic feet. So let me write that down. Okay, so now I want to fill up the volume of this classroom um, with ping pong balls. So how the heck are we going to do that? Well, next thing I need to do is figure out the volume of a ping pong ball. Well, the, honestly, the best way to figure this out is actually just a quick Google search. So let me just show you. Um, there, this puts the volume in terms of uh, cubic feet here. So just a quick search of volume of a ping pong ball, it's telling me the volume is 0 0.009659 cubic feet. So 0 0.009659. So just a quick, quick uh, Google search gave me that. All right, so now the next question I have to figure out is how many um, ping pong balls will fit into this classroom? All right, um, so to figure that out, I'm gonna take the, the total volume and divide it by the volume of each um, ping pong ball. So the number of ping pong balls to fill the classroom. Well, this is equal to, you take the 4,000 cubic feet and you divide it by the volume of the ping pong balls here. We'll see what we get when we do that. I'm going to take my 4,000. I'm going to divide it by 0 0.009659, the volume of each ping pong ball. Wow, and, and look at this. Uh, to fill this up, you're going to need 414,121 ping pong balls, which is, which is crazy. So I'm, I'm just going to rough this out to be 414,000. Or a lot of ping pong balls. An awful lot. All right, so that was kind of just an estimation, um, in, you know, using a quick, quick internet search to figure out the answer here. All right, so let's try an example with socks, all right? So suppose you have 10 pairs of socks. You have five black and five blue, okay, all right? And they are not paired up, okay? So think about now how many socks you have, okay? So instead, they're just all mixed up in a drawer, okay? So you have basically 20 socks in the drawer now, okay, if you think about it. You have 10 black socks in there and 10 blue, okay? All right, so it's early in the morning and you don't want to turn the lights in on in your dark room. Okay, so you have these 20 socks. Here's the first question. How many socks must you pull out to guarantee you have um, a pair of one color? 
Well, so to answer this question here, you're going to kind of brute force it and think of all the possible combinations. So you could pull out a black sock, then a black sock. Okay, well, that's you only need to pull two socks out. All right, and you got a pair of one color, which is awesome. Or you could pull blue, then blue. You got it right there. But you could go black, then blue. Then, now here's the next question. Then does it matter which one you pull from the um, sock drawer to pair off either your black or your blue? No. So it looks like the most you would need to pull out, and you can see the same thing. You could go black then blue, then blue, which works out, or you could go blue, then black, then blue, which, which gets you still a pair that works, or you could go blue, then black, then black, and you have it. So it looks like to guarantee that you have a pair of one color, looks like you're gonna need to pull three socks. And that'll automatically guarantee that no matter what, if you pull out three socks, you will get a pair. Okay, that works. So how many must you pull out to have two good pairs? Okay, so each pair is the same color. So now you want to have two pairs of socks. Well, it looks like this. We know that if you pull three, three socks out, you will get one. Okay, so then the next question asks is how many um, must you pull out again, okay, to, to get the same color? Well, after you pull out three socks, okay, you have a color that's left over, okay? So suppose after three socks, okay, you, you pulled black, blue, blue. Well, now you have a blue, blue pair, okay? So blue, blue pair. So you have this one black sock here left over. Well, what's the worst case scenario that could happen? Well, you could pull another blue sock. Well, still, what's even worse? Then you could pull another blue sock. Well, now, how many uh, pairs do you have? You have two pairs, two pairs of the blue, color, blue sock. So, so you have two good pairs here. So how many socks did it take you to get that? So you needed to pull five socks out to have two good pairs. All right, last question. How many must you pull out to be certain you have a pair of black socks? Well, so you have to pull out enough so you make sure you have a pair of black socks. Well, this is a little bit of a trick question. Is it possible in your first 10 socks that you pull out to pull all blue socks? Yes, absolutely. So you have to have you have to consider that case. So you could pull out 10, 10 blue socks for sure. Well, then how many socks would you need to pull out additionally after that to have a pair of black socks? We need to pull two out. So to make sure, to be certain that you have a pair of black socks, you need to pull 12 socks from the drawer. So this just used a little bit of logic to thinking this through, to figure out how many you would need to pull to, to get the socks that you want. Okay, let's talk about the pigeonhole principles. All right, and this is the concept of what the pigeonhole principle is in mathematics. Suppose that a flock of 20 pigeon flies into a set of 19 pigeonholes to roost, okay? Because there are 20 pigeons, but there are only 19 pigeonholes, what has to happen, at least one of those 19 pigeonholes must have at least two pigeons in it. There's no, there's no other way for 20 pigeons to fit into 19 holes. One of the pigeonholes has to have additional pigeons. To see why this is, note that each of the pigeonholes had at most one pigeon in it. Okay, so at most 19 pigeons, one per hole, could be accommodated. This illustrates a general principle called the pigeonhole principle, which states that if there are more pigeons than pigeonholes, there must be at least one pigeonhole with at least two pigeons. In it. So if there are more, more objects than places to put the objects, well then the, the places where you can put the object must have at least, at least two of those objects in it. That's the whole idea of the pigeonhole. All right, and it gets us to this weird question, all right, that I want to end this lecture on talking about the hairy body question. Are there two non-bald people on earth who have the exact same number of hairs on their body? <laughs> how, how could you even begin to answer that? Okay. 
Well, the first thing you might want to do is figure out how many hairs on the human body. Okay. So just a quick Google search says there's roughly, each person has roughly 4.9 million hairs on their body. Okay. So that's that right there is a rough average. Okay, so obviously some people are more hairy than that, some people are less hairy than that. So let's just assume, okay, that um, that we, we want to account for all the people in the world. Okay, so let's just say hairy people have, I don't know, 10 times as many hairs on their body. So non-bald people, going back, I'll just delete this to see it. can have between one hair to, let's even say, 20 million hairs on their body. We're saying a hairy person has, you know, four times as much hair as, as the average person. Okay, let's just shoot that. So we want to use the pigeonhole principle here to figure out if um, there are two non-bald people on Earth who have the exact same number of hairs on their body. Well, Consider consider pigeonholes, okay, that have the number of hairs on their body. So, or rooms, if you want to think about it that way. Room one, all people with one hair on their body. Room two, all people with two hairs on body. And you're going to keep going. There's a third room. And in that room, you're going to put all people with three hairs on their body. And you're going to keep going until you get to room 20 million. Okay. And in this room, you're going to put all people who have 20 million hairs on body. Okay. Well, how many people are there on earth? Okay, there's roughly 7.53 billion people, all right? I don't know how many bald people there are on, are on Earth, but let's just say there's, let's even say there's a billion bald people on Earth, okay? Or one, let's say there's 1.53 billion bald people, or bald people. So that means there's 6 billion people who are non-bald people. So if you were to take all the 6 million non-bald people, 6 billion non-bald people, and you were to say, okay, get into a room, all right, that, ha that has the number of hairs you have on their body. So let's just say I have 5 million hairs on my body. I would get into the room that has 5 million hairs. Well, suppose the first 20 million people, all right, all have different hairs on their body. So room one has one person, room two has one person, and room three has one person in it, all the way to room 20 million has one person. Well, then when you get to the person 20 million and one, and you say, okay, how many hairs do you have on your body? All right, go into that room um, and tell me if there's one other person, at least one other person in it. Well, if they walk into that room, all the rooms are taken. So there has to be at least, at least two people who have the same amount of hairs on their body because all the rooms are taken. All right, this... Um, this hairy body question is also covered in your textbook if, if my explanation um, seemed a little wonky to you. All right, class. Thanks.